On February 3rd, 2023, a train operated by Norfolk Southern was derailed in East Palestine, Ohio, causing concern about the chemicals that may have been involved in the accident. In this video, we will be discussing the chemicals involved in the derailment, the impact on the community, and the ongoing response efforts. The initial cause of the derailment appears to have been a broken axle, with footage showing sparking up to 20 miles prior to the accident. Several train cars were affected, with some containing flammable chemicals that ignited and caused a fire that burned until February 5th. The fire included pellets of polymers such as polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride, as well as chemicals including butyl acrylate and ethyl hexyl acrylate, which are both toxic to fish. On February 6th, vinyl chloride was released through pressure release devices and burned in a controlled manner. Vinyl chloride is a known carcinogen and can lead to the formation of chlorinated dioxins and PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, when combusted. Tank cars containing ethylene glycol, monobutyl ether, and propylene glycol were breached, and two tanks of petroleum lube oil were also affected. It's also worth noting that two hoppers of polyvinyl were involved in the fire. Polyvinyl is just short for polyvinyl chloride, and when this is combusted, it can also lead to the formation of chlorinated dioxins. Emergency responders were initially uncertain about the hazardous materials on board, and people within a one-mile radius were ordered to evacuate. The immediate impact on the local community is still being assessed, and the long-term impact remains unknown. The ongoing response efforts are being managed by the Environmental Protection Agency, which is working to test for harmful chemicals and prevent further damage. It is important to have clear guidelines and information available in case of emergencies like this, and it is crucial to show the public the choices being made and why they are being made. This is a complex issue that requires expertise in several domains, and ongoing efforts are required to minimize the impact of the derailment on the community and neighboring cities. As a chemist, I believe that testing for harmful chemicals and preventing similar accidents from happening again should be the priority in the aftermath of the East Palestine train derailment. It's also essential to understand the potential risks of the chemicals involved and take appropriate measures to minimize their impact on human health and the environment. Here you can see a manifest of all of the train cars that were involved in the derailment. There were other cars, presumably in this line, that aren't listed here. Here you can see the commodity that was present on the cars, as well as some relevant information. Now, whether or not certain things were breached is listed here. This is where I got my information from. So here you can see there's four different tanks of vinyl chloride. These were not burned in the initial train accident. These were manually burned after a few days due to concerns of a potential explosion from building pressure. There are some other chemicals here where fire damage had occurred to the exterior of the train cars, but if no breach has occurred, then none of the chemicals actually leaked. Propylene glycol isn't a chemical that you should be too concerned about. This is something that most organisms can easily break down as this just gets converted into pyruvate. This doesn't have significant toxicity on the environment. Now, that being said, each of these train cars has somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 35,000 gallons, and that's still a lot. Now, even if this went into like a waterway, waterways tend to have a lot of flux, and so this might get diluted really quickly, even if it did spill into the environment. Now, that being said, any of the chemicals that have spilled are trying to be contained at the moment. There's active work from both Norfolk Southern and the EPA in cleaning up this mess. And as far as I can tell, everybody's doing everything right at least to the extent that they can. You might have some expectation that they can suddenly out of nowhere test for every chemical everywhere, but that's pretty challenging to do. And from what I've seen, they're doing everything the right way. So hopefully this video reassures you and you're not too worried that some nefarious stuff is happening. It's very unfortunate that the train derailment happened when it did. Sometimes trains do derail, but efforts are in place to lessen the likelihood that that happens, especially when the train is carrying lots of dangerous goods. There's usually detectors roughly every 30 miles or so to catch stuff like this, and so it was just a very unfortunate series of events. Now, while you might just blame the railway for all of this, the government's also allowing these chemicals to be transported, so this doesn't 100% fall on the railway either. They're being allowed to transport dangerous goods. And while you might hope that people had more preventative measures ahead of time, a common thing that happens in most jobs is that rules are put into place after someone dies or gets injured. At this point, nobody's died as a consequence of the train derailment, except for lots and lots of fish, which is terrible. And there is definitely an environmental impact as a result of this disaster. But now we have attention on the problem, so hopefully the government and the railways will do something about it to prevent stuff like this from happening again. Now, if there was any groundwater contamination, essentially, as long as there's some wells available to 
form a cone of depression, they should be able to remove any of the affected groundwater relatively easily. So a spill into the environment doesn't mean that it gets spread completely everywhere. Obviously, if it falls into a stream, you can see the chemicals getting spread a little bit further. But in terms of groundwater contamination, there's techniques that'll be used which are commonplace for the remediation of groundwater. In addition, the chemicals that were spilled don't pose a huge significant threat to people. The toxicity of propylene glycol is very low. The toxicity of ethyl hexalacrylate and butyl acrylate are relatively low for people. They're also biodegradable in the air. They just take a while. Now, that being said, there was initially a risk when the vinyl chloride was being released that hydrochloric acid and potentially phosgene, as well as some like soot, could be affecting people. But the evacuation was already in place when the controlled burn was happening. So nobody should have been in the affected zone and the air should be entirely fine to breathe now. Yes, there might still be slightly higher than usual fine organic particulate. It isn't some massive cause for concern. So burning the vinyl chloride was actually the right move as far as I can tell, since the combustion is pretty complete. And the hydrochloric acid will just go into the environment and react with minerals and then no longer be a problem. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it has provided useful information on the chemicals involved in the East Palestine train derailment. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.